Welcome back to another build video. The subject of this video is Wicked Wanda's from Bar Mills Models. I believe that this is the best selling kit from Bar Mills. Uh, when I first started looking at building laser cut kits for my layout, this was one of the first kits I was interested in and so I'm kind of excited to finally get started on it. I really have no idea what color scheme I'm going to use for this thing at this point. Uh, when I first saw it, I thought that Wicked Wanda's was a brothel, but I guess it's actually based on a restaurant. So let's see what's in the box. Bracing, of course. One of our wood. The decals. These must be trim pieces. I believe this is all roofing, or is this siding shingle? I think it's all roofing shingle. And some metal details, of course. See the friendliest house in town. That's something you would have for a brothel. How many pages of instructions do we have here? Well, this one goes on. Oh, here we get the starting construction. All right, so there's a lot to read here. See what's going on. I remember one reviewer said that the stairs were kind of complicated, so maybe they are. I went through and labeled all of the parts and then the parts that are going to get paint, the walls, I sprayed them with a gray enamel uh, spray paint primer. That is mainly to help to prevent the acrylic paint from warping the wood from the moisture. Then I attached uh, the trim pieces to the sides and I would have done this before I painted them but I thought I was going to paint the trim pieces a different color. Then I decided I wasn't going to paint the trim pieces a different color. I was going to paint them the same color as the walls. And so then I attached them to the sides to make that easier. Uh, but that's the only reason that the trim has is, is not been painted yet. Now I will uh, start painting the walls. And uh, I'm going to do that with an airbrush. These are my wall pieces back from painting. And I painted them using the Vallejo old and new wood effects following the procedure for the old effects and really it's about three different colors of brown or brown gray that you see at this point. It's kind of a lot of effort I think to do this um, and I'm not exactly sure that it's worth the effort because after all the weathering I, I don't know how much is actually left but I thought I would give it a try for this particular model. So now I'm going to apply what would be the main building color using a sponge and the color I'm using is uh, Folk Art uh, Butter Pecan. And I really hope that this is a good color. I, I don't have any idea really what color to paint this building. I'm going to try and do this rather sparingly. I don't want a lot of color on the building. There's something I want to try on this build. Uh, this is going to be my last laser cut kit for a while, so I want to give it a shot. This piece, as best as I can tell, is the back piece, and in the completed building, it doesn't have any uh, structure outside of it. There's no balcony, there's no dock or anything. I had a brace down the middle, which I was able to remove pretty easily. And now I'm going to cut out a section. It's 
So now I'm committed. What I've done is where I cut out this piece, I put in scale 2x8s. 2x8 is really too wide, it should be a 2x4, but I don't have any of those. So I put in scale 2x8s to represent the uh, structure of the wall. So the idea here is the clapboard has come off the wall. On the inside, what you should see is the uh, interior wall, which I think would be lath in this case. I think that's the correct term. So I'm going to use this piece since I know it's the right size. And I'm going to try just scribing some lines in it. So that's sort of the look I'm going for. And the next thing I'm going to do is give it a patch job. Ideally, that should be flush with the clapboard, but it's not. I've put all the windows in the walls, and on this kit, I really recommend putting the windows in the walls before you assemble the walls together, uh, unless your method of painting isn't going to allow that. Because this house is abandoned, uh, I didn't put uh, window panes in all of the windows and some of them I, I busted out the uh, the center parts kind of like that so like this wall uh, has some empty windows and missing panes things like that because I've noticed that that's common on abandoned houses I would put in broken windows but I haven't really figured out how to model broken windows yet so if anyone knows how to do that I'd love to hear about it maybe they should make a video so now it's time to start assembling the walls. These two are the first ones to go together. And earlier I put sort of registration marks against the walls to figure out which ones went where. So I know that these two go together. So they go around this base piece like this. And I put a little piece of bracing here to give it some extra surface area. So we'll try and get this one in and get it square. I decided that since this kit has a lot of windows, I would need to paint the interior walls a dark color. And it's easier to do that before you assemble the whole thing. I should have done it even earlier before I put the windows in. It doesn't have to be neat, but this is good enough. Also, I had decided uh, a little late in the project that I wanted to put a second floor in. So I made a second floor out of some strip wood. And I used strip wood because I kind of thought it was going to be more visible than it probably is going to be. Uh, I probably could have just used cardboard. But the other issue that I have is the bracing supports. So I have to fit this in around the bracing supports. So this, some corners need trimmed off. And that's why I put two different supports here in the middle. This is the result of my somewhat mangled attempt at a second floor. 
It doesn't look real pretty when you see the whole thing, but it's good enough. All it needs to do is make it so when you look in a second floor window, you don't look out a first floor window. I had originally thought that for this fourth wall, I would remove some of the wall in this area and make it look like it, the wall had fallen down because I've seen a lot of houses like that, but I decided that was a little bit too ambitious for this particular project, so I'm not going to try it on this kit. I'm going to have to try that on a cheaper kit. walls assembled and here you can see what the interior looks like. These are the other pieces. At this point in the build I want to give it a wash of the folk art barn wood. This is where I am with construction. I've started putting on the stairs and the instructions are pretty confusing um, for several reasons. One is that the text and the pictures are on different pages so you have to do a lot of flipping back and forth to see what uh, the parts are. And they reference the part numbers or letters in some cases and once you've detached them from the sprue you don't know what the number is necessarily anymore. You have to, so you have to do a lot of cross-referencing. For this part of the stairway or balcony or whatever I wanted to have the boards kind of falling apart so the sheet that they provided I just cut it apart into individual boards and glued on some of those in sections I had wanted to build this without the base this is the base part but it turns out it's actually pretty difficult to do that so I think I'm gonna leave the base on this part had broken off and so it didn't get painted uh, so I'm going to have to come back and touch that one up. For these wood decking pieces, I painted them using Vallejo wood grain, which is a transparent paint, and it looks pretty good over actual wood. Here's one of the wood sheets that I painted, and this did not get any primer, and there actually was a little bit of warping uh, on the parts, and so that's why they recommend that you use uh, an enamel primer on wood before you do any uh, painting with uh, water-based paints. I'm working on trying to get this deck piece in and it's, uh, it's pretty challenging. So there's two tabs here that go in the wall here and they warn you throughout the construction not to block those two slots, these two slots here. And then before you put the deck on you're supposed to put uh, a post here and a post here and then there was a post that comes up here that supports a railing which I broke in trying to get this to fit. So also I cut out a couple of boards on the deck and now I got it so I think it fits. I think it actually makes sense to put the deck in uh, maybe a little earlier than they say but it, you certainly would want to cut out the deck as a piece and as you're assembling these different pieces do test fits to make sure it always fits. I'm in the process of adding the steps and so I've added this uh, step stringer here 
and glued it in and let that dry. And the way they instruct you to do this is to start building the steps from the top down before you glue the stringers to the base. And in order to keep them the proper spacing, I'm using this tweezer uh, squeezed in there just to the right distance. So once you have the top established, you could start building up from the bottom. For the assembly, the only thing I have left is the roof and the railings, and so I've masked off the windows uh, because I'm going to begin weathering. And the main reason to mask off the windows is I'm going to be spraying this with dull coat, and the dull coat will otherwise fog up the windows. So that's the point of that. The instructions say to add the roof next and then the railings after the roof. I think I'm going to do the railings first and do the roof last um, for the sake of weathering the railings all with the same uh, techniques. This is the uh, completed deck work and stairs and really it's pretty much of a mess. Uh, they, they could redo the uh, instructions for this kit. It's very difficult to figure out, for example, on posts like this, exactly where it is supposed to go in relation to the other deck pieces. And this deck piece does not necessarily line up with some of the, the post areas. So some, some more photos or something would have been helpful with that. I'm almost hesitant to show close-ups on this kit. It's uh, so messed up on the deck. A lot of glue spots and stuff. But at this point, I'm going to start the weathering process and I'm going to do a wash on the deck with the full cart uh, barn wood. You might notice I had done a wash on the deck before, but then in doing some touch up painting, I painted over the wash I had done previously, so I have to start over again. I added a few more washes, uh, dark brown and uh, some gray uh, stuff I've done in the past. And then I covered it with weathering powders and then sprayed it with uh, some Tamiya Flat Clear to seal the weathering powders. And this is the look. Um, while I was doing that, while I was spraying it, I put the roof panels in place to make sure that I did not spray the Tamiya Flat Clear on the interior of the windows because uh, that would fog them up. So everything is done except for the roof and uh, details. made a little bit of a mess gluing the these panels on I didn't realize that they were there was actually a left and a right that went on specifically so I had to reverse them also uh, on these panels there's a little piece that just comes up above the crown a little bit same here so those need to be trimmed off once the glue dries and of course now it's you have to be careful to do everything without breaking everything else, which is maybe why they recommended putting the roof on before you built all the railings. I'm trying to attach this trim piece, and with this side in the slots, this thing doesn't even come close. So this clearly does not fit the way it's intended. And I don't think there's anything wrong with the way these pieces are mounted on the walls. So, I'm going to have to cut that off this tab. So there's a little bit of a gap right here. It doesn't fit exactly. And you know, when pieces like this don't fit, you wonder, what did I do wrong, or is it the kit? In this case, I kind of think it's the kit. 
Regarding the roofing, you really, don't really get any instructions at all. You get this sentence, the shingle roofing can now be added along with weathering details, castings, and large sign. So this is the shingle roofing. They don't really give instructions on how to add it. Oh, so I see now this is on a sticky piece of paper where you pull off strips of the shingle and add it on there. Before I do that, there's rafter pieces that go in here that I need to add. This is the model with all the roof shingles applied. There are some white strips that they include that uh, I put down the cap and then also in this ridge line. For the shed area, they give you uh, these strips of paper, which are supposed to represent tar paper. But I'm going to use these leftover strips that I made as part of my Carter supply uh, video. They include a cast stove pipe, which I thought about putting here. So I drilled out a hole and then I decided I didn't like the way it looks, so I covered that up with a little Coca-Cola sign I had from a different kit. I added the chimney and I had to do a lot of filing to get it to the right angle to, uh, to be vertical on this roof line. So I like to use this black acrylic paint to paint around the base of the chimney to kind of give it like a tar seal look. Just because this stuff goes on so thick. Another thing I like to do near the finishing stage is add some of this AK Interactive Grime. This house is going to be in a uh, kind of overgrown vegetation area so it look it'll look good to have uh, some slime around the baseboards
Make it love.